So what happens now? The so because it's such a huge development, it's the biggest application that's ever come to the planning committee. It's so big, the mayor needs to look at it as well. They will go to Sadiq and it's for him and his uh, um, advisors to take a decision. During this month, we recognise the huge contribution that the Latin American, Iberian, Hispanic, Amerindian and Lusophone communities make to London. They're among the many diverse communities originally from all over the world who together make our city the great place that it is. If our community is so important for London, what are you going to do to save Elephant and Castle and Seven Sisters for demolition? From demolition. Thank you very much. And he can do three things. He can approve as it is, order South Council to reject the application, or he can call it in, which means that the GLA, the Greater London Authority, will take over the application and revise it themselves with their own team of experts and take a, f a decision whenever that is. Elephant and Castle will come to me as the Mayor of London, uh, same called quasi-judicial role I have as the Mayor, and I can't prejudice uh, my decision. It's a sort of like a judge by giving you a comment on that. What I can tell you is uh, it'll come to me in the near future. Uh, and I understand the sensitivities, uh, but the council's made a decision. Uh, and I've got to, uh, I hope you'd respect my role as, a, as the mayor and the quasi digital role. I can't give a running commentary on something that'll come to me in the future. We started a petition online in change.org calling Sadiq to care for the community, to protect the local community, the BME community, Elephant and Castle, and to hold the land sea accountable. What we cannot have is those traders being displaced Yes, there are real improvements to the transport community and to the shopping centre, but we, what we cannot have is those cultural communities who've been there a long time, who provide a valuable service, being displaced. A few months later, Sadiq Khan chose option one and approved Delancey's plans to demolish the shopping centre without making any changes reassuring that there would be an unprecedented amount of support for the existing traders. If you ever thought that they were going to get that, you really haven't been paying attention. Left abysmal veins and Similar cases like the Elephant and Castle Shopping Centre uh, had a not very difficult solution, a quite simple solution, which is you need to take over that piece of land, empty and demolish, but obviously you have uh, existing trade, uh, tenants and traders in there. Create a temporary place, move everyone, same conditions, in the same area, same or less rent. In the meantime, they keep trading while you build the new place. Guarantee the what's called the first refusal option for those existing traders to move back in four or five whenever year's time. It's not that we are demanding something irrational, we're demanding a, a decent treatment and a fair relocation package for traders who have been here for 20, 30 years. If you're demolishing people's livelihoods, it only seems fair you relocate them somewhere else, right? Southwark Council said there were 130 independent traders in and around the shopping centre to be affected by the plans. The traders could all apply for relocation in three different sites, which wouldn't even cover half of them, but there was a chance some could be part of Elephant Park, and some offered money to go elsewhere. I know it ain't all much, but it's better than the original plan of <coughs> barely fucking anything. And they would have got away with it too, if it wasn't for them meddling campaigners fighting tooth and nail to force Delancey to work out at least something. I visited the traders just after Judgment Day. It has been revealed. Just 36 of them had been offered any relocation at all. Unfortunately with this market, um, I think only between five and seven stallholders have been offered units in the new locations. I was refused. 
I find it hard to believe if you're setting up a new market that you can't have a record stock in there. It's been unfair on other people as well. The person that works opposite me, he's been in this market 15 years and he's been refused. And even of the lucky 36 offered anywhere, doesn't really make them lucky at all. I've been involved with the council and the developer with regarding to selection criteria. However, that has not been, has not been followed and it's clear, evidence are, sh are very clear that it's not been followed by, by the actual outcome of the relocation process. I've made three choices and the first and second choice were given to somebody else and my third choice was completely ignored and I was given a unit that is fifth of my unit size. So this is what they've offered you? Yeah. Something this size? They're trying to offer, I'm not going to get it, no. Hmm. The new relocation space they offered Emad is the size of his current storeroom. And how big should they offer you? Like for like. Or well, at least. So it should be at least as big as this shop. It should be like for like, at least half. At least. I have been relocated in Castle Square, but I'm on the first floor, which I asked for the ground floor. Point I need, I need a ground floor, because I've got a lot of disabled customers, a lot. In the surface, uh, if you see the, the, the way we have been treated, it will look like we have been treated uh, with pure justice and that we've been taken care of. So the council appointed a business advisor called Tree Shepherd, but the funding uh, comes from the Lancy, so it's paid by the Lancy. And uh, although they deem themselves as independent, you know, th there is a clear conflict of interest because it's paid by the developer. How do you be, how do you uh, look after the people that the developer is not trying to look after when you're being paid by the developer? So they're supposed to be assisting the traders in the relocation uh, with uh, business support, one-to-one um, -one surgeries. But if you interview the traders, I guess they're going to tell you that they're not happy with them. So we have uh, been in communication with the council and the developer a number of times. They listen to our concern, but it's like it's going in from one ear and while it's going through to the other ear, they just select what might be advantageous mm. to the process and they throw out the rest. Basically, what they feel is that they, uh, whenever they book a one-to-one -one session or a meeting, is then used uh, as a, a box-ticking exercise to, to be able to claim they actually had X number of meetings with the traders. So that shows a level of engagement. The whole system from the beginning, from the beginning end, until now, is nothing more than a tick box exercise, including the relocation process. It's almost like you're in a room and you're shouting out your opinion. There are people in the room, but they're not really listening. They just got their hands over their ears. People don't only come here for my music, they come here to talk. They come here not only to talk to me and ask for advice, but they come here and talk to other customers. I've got customers now who are friends with other customers of mine. It's the energy in the elephant and the diversity and all different ethnicity was just lovely. Everyone living together as one. And even though the air gate went down, people were still coming back from wherever they went to me so I felt really special like I was doing something different you know it becomes like home <laughs> I'm here more than I'm at my house most of the time it's a nice social thing as well and I worry that I'm gonna be stuck indoors watching TV you know a dreadful thing really to be stuck indoors behind four walls watching television watching afternoon television you know I couldn't be doing it this gives me something to live for. If you're not re relocated in the place you'd like to be relocated, uh, what happens next? I don't know. I really don't know. How long have you been here? I've been here nearly 20 years now. Fairness. That's what we were asking for. Just pure fairness. Just If you're going to be making decisions about certain things, just be fair. Be human. Acknowledge the fact that you're affecting people's lives. I would just love them to treat us that better, you know. You want people to aspire and look up to you. 
and think, okay, yeah, this, for example, this is the person from the council that has been elected, yes, to fight my corner. Make them feel that. Don't make them feel the opposite. Don't make them feel that you're selling yourself as somebody from the council. Mm. Selling yourself. Selling your principles. Mm. Don't make people feel like that. And if you are a developer, come on, mate. You know, you, you want to redevelop an area. Acknowledge what's inside that area. Acknowledge that what's inside the area is human being like you. Mm. Who also have needs. There's something called karma. So, whatever you do for yourself now, whether in a personal level or on a group collective, believe me, karma always wins. Somehow in your life, and I'm talking to the developer, that karma will come back to you. Because you don't realize what, you, what damage you create for other people will come back to you in your life. It will haunt you. It will come back to you in a different form. Maybe not now, maybe in 10 years time, maybe in 15 years time, but karma always wins. It will come back to you. So think of your conscious. Don't just think of money. Elephant and Castle is, the, I would say, the biggest metaphor at the moment mm. uh, in London. What, what's going on? Mm. You know, you, do, you have a developer that's not engaging with the community. The community is only saying, you know, we want a nicer place. We want uh, you know, a, a, a fresh face for the elephants. Mm. But we want to be part of it, not you know, be left out. Simple as that. The current form of the plans are not made for the local community. Mm for the local traders. What we want is a redevelopment with the community inside the plants and all not uh, left out. No one is against change. Everyone would love to see elephant look nicer, attract more tourists, safer to walk around at night, and generally happier. It's the way they do it that's important. Why are we reduced to cheering them for building the bare minimum of social houses? I think the improvements to social housing in particular. Thankful there's at least some in the mix. Why is relocating less than half of the existing traders something to celebrate? Why do we accept that luxury houses have to be part of this at all? There is a way to regenerate Elephant and Castle that includes the people that built it. Stays real to what it is. I think Claro is proof of that. Taking something DIY and evolving into something bigger and better. But still remaining real to what and who you are. Look, I think uh, there are a handful of people in Southwark, in London, who are opposed to seeing massive regeneration schemes happen. If you believe the council who have carried this out to be moustache-twirling Machiavellian villains who have secretly schemed for years to make money from this, you're honestly giving them too much credit. They are not the Illuminati. They're the creepy high school weirdo, bullied by the barber jacket wearing rich boy with the hot sister into picking on smaller kids. As long as their daddies are donating to the new school gym, they'll get away with it. But developers got money and therefore they got the power. Mm. So it's a small person against the giants. As long as we're letting these dead-eyed psychos who only care about one thing shape our surroundings, build our homes, dictate our relationships with the people around us, the system is more broken than my own sense of self-worth. They're quick to reassure you. Obviously profits need to be made from all this. I'm here to deassure you of that, because it's clear, while the bottom line drives it all, the machinery will flatten, price and push out those we should be taking care of. All so the middle class people don't stay away.
I get the conspiracy theories that they're all secret lizard people or whatever the fuck, because honestly, it's an easier pill to swallow than the truth. That they're humans. Doing this to other humans. So they can have a boot room. I know when you go to your house and you are alone and you go to sleep, whether you're from the developer or from the council or part of the whole process that have impacted negatively on traders, somehow you will be alone at a certain point of your life and you will think and reflect. And when you reflect, you will realize what you have done. One day, they will all realize the truth. And at that point, I'm past feeling angry. I just feel sorry for them. They have to live knowing they poached, gutted and stuffed the elephant. So its insides are as hollow as the shell companies they funnel tax money through. That their whole lives, they were unable to see past places, social interaction, other human beings as anything but figures on a bank statement. I feel sorry for them. They missed out on so much. Nothing we have done is, even if you know, you're like, oh no, you should not have taken a megaphone into, you know, somebody, people's ear hearing or whatever. Nothing of this is comparable to actually the damage that's been caused by the university. This is going to cause, like, the, the complete, like, destruction of, of the community at Elephant Castle and, like, the turfing out of, like, working class and, like, Latin communities. Like, causing a bit of noise is not really comparable to social cleansing. <laughs> if we can build a movement big enough, we will defeat them. It's about whether we can achieve the kind of unity um, and um, solidarity that's necessary to do that. If you don't speak out, you might be against it, but if you don't speak out for the record, you're not against it or you're not concerned because if the councillors and the, and the developers don't see an email, a tweet or something, they can always claim, oh, you know, they're not against it or they're not worried about it or, you know, they're in favour of it, you know, just because you don't say it. We can do anything, you know, we are the majority after all. If there were 20,000 people outside that planning committee, do you think they would have approved that application? I mean, that's the reality. We've already seen, uh, like, significant concessions. Uh, over just the course of a year, like lots of these like fights over like social housing, over gentrification, they, they play out over like a long time. So we can fight them, even though they're these uh, tyrannical overlords. Yeah, maybe it's a bit of a David and Goliath kind of situation, but yes, I think we can. The fight would continue. This story was still far from over. This story is always going to be far from over. After spending countless hours reading their tweets, watching their videos, staring at their advertising, it's easy to believe that nothing really means anything. And it doesn't. Real or fake are just stories we tell ourselves. But there's only one way to decide which story you tell. Don't keep waiting for them Twitter notifications. Leave your bedroom. Or at least invite your neighbour in to find out how they're feeling. Life's better when you aren't alone. Strip away the gloss. Experience it in person. Whether it's a decision you're making that's going to impact people, or the people making that decision, 
see them face to face. Find out what's real. And when that person is there in front of you, you'll just know. I told you she was a real one. Yeah. <laughs> 